So let me start first uh, right out of the gate saying right now there's there's nothing preventing us uh, from getting to the 16th. Um, we do have some work to do, and I'll, I'll highlight a little bit of that uh, for you as, as I go through uh, my opening remarks. Um, yeah, I, I do want to thank our, our workforce down at, at Kennedy and, and really across the agency, but certainly the folks at Kennedy that, again, uh, you know, worked through a, uh, a storm and uh, got back on site, and, and uh, thanks to Janet Petro down at Kennedy for the, the, the group that, that keeps everything going there, the rideout team. Um, we're, we're thankful that uh, they're okay through all this, and, and everybody got back on site uh, starting to work uh, yesterday. So, um, But let me back up from where we got to yesterday. I know there's questions about our decision to roll out, our decision to stay. Um, we did have very two very focused and deliberate meetings on both um, before we rolled out. Um, we did take a look at what the predictions were for the, the storm at the at the time, of course, with our Space Force colleagues uh, informed by the National Hurricane Center, um, and and at the time we we did say, you know, hey, this 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 could be a, a risk, but what the forecast then that was that was going to be you know pretty loosely formed, and um, the wind speeds were going to be much lower, and we got out to the pad and started doing the hookups, and then it was, hey, this storm looks stronger, and and here's the predictions. I think we had that meeting uh, late Sunday evening and uh, had the discussion about the risk of rolling back versus the risk of staying at the pad and when we could disconnect and start the rollback. Um, when that time frame looked like we'd be able to get there, the winds were really high, and, uh, and the, the, the risk of rolling, that dynamic movement, um, which in general drives a lot of uh, load into the vehicle um, and and the risk of, of moving with the high winds, we decided to stay at the pad. We we uh, had predictions then that the storm, you know, the, the winds were going to be high, but still within our certification limits. Um, so I can, I can assure you that I think it was a two-and-a-half-hour meeting, two-and-a-half, three-hour meeting uh, where the experts from the uh, – Space Launch System team under John Honeycutt, um, John Blevins and his team uh, talked a lot about the risk of both and the analysis that went into both, so we decided to stay. Um, and I'm happy to answer more questions about that process. But we did have, of course, a, a team on the center um, above and beyond just the rideout team that you know looks out for watching for power on the vehicle, keeps an eye on the vehicle, we did a visual survey of the vehicle um, before, um, high-resolution photography, um, so that we had a baseline. And actually, we had done several of those before, so we had a baseline before the before the storm. Um, and then, obviously, rode rode through the storms and, and storm and looking at issues now on the backside. And I'll share a few of those things that we've uh, been looking at. Um, there's some loose RTV on the uh, on the Orion uh, that they're um, probably going to uh, 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 snip off. They can reach reach it to, to snip it off in the uh, from the crew access arm. It looks like, and uh, probably disposition to uh, to not replace it. Uh, it Maybe too difficult from where we're at, and of course we'll look at the risk of not replacing it. Um, there was a tear in one of the engine uh, rain covers that uh, we're going to be able to uh, to fix. Um, some water in the crew access arm that we're able to uh, uh, take care of. So those those three things I think are are behind us. Um, we did have one of the umbilicals to Orion uh, that came off its tray. Um, you know, they sit in a tray to stay aligned and. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get the picture out there of the folks going out on the Orion, Orion umbilical arm to move that tray back. Uh, one of those folks uh, we we learned today and uh, is a is a veteran, so uh, even more special day uh, for him. Uh, see these these couple folks out on this arm, um, folks above on the crew access arm, hoping I'm helping them, helping guide them. 
Uh, so you figure the vehicle is 322 feet tall. They're, they're basically at the base of the Orion capsule. You can imagine the height they're at even just to the ground level, let alone below the pad surface. So um, that, uh, that issue was uh, straightened out and the umbilicals back in the tray. Um, we do have an issue on the ground side of one of the electrical umbilicals on the, the hydrogen tail service mast unit that uh, was exhibiting some erratic signals um, that the uh, team is out at the pad uh, taking that apart, doing some visual inspection, figuring out uh, what what the issue is there and, and what we might need to do in terms of uh, replacing that harness. We, we do have a backup harness that looks like we'd be able to use if it needs to be replaced. Um, and then the uh, the uh, non-controversial wind discussion, which I know there's been a lot of uh, 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 thought about um, outside, and I can tell you that the thought inside the agency has been even greater. Um, I'm going to figure out the, the best way to step through this. So, so we did put a portable anemometer um, on the, uh, at the 55-foot level on the, at, on the uh, mobile, launch pad, mobile launch tower and, um, and measured the winds at the 132-foot level as well. Uh, in addition, there were a number of streamers put out on the vehicle to uh, look at wind direction during the storm as monitored from the cameras. Um, the 60-foot reference is uh, where data has been taken over a, a number of number of years going back to the shuttle program, so that's why it's uh, you hear it's reference to that. So basically it, it's measured this one time at the 55-foot level, all the time at the 132-foot level. And then there's also uh, measurements at the top of the uh, lightning towers around the uh, around there, which is at the 457 foot level. And then everything in between is extrapolated those those different heights. And then the certification limits are determined for each of those heights. Um, during the uh, the event, uh, the the hurricane, we uh, all the measurements taken showed no. Um, breaking of those limits, so the wind speed, so the load's going to um, vary at each of those heights, and uh, and the peak we can take at each of those heights. None of those were exceeded for our certification limits. Um, in addition to that, we we um, we take uh, what's called the flight readiness analysis cycle. We never saw anything above those limits. That's and that's seventy five percent of what we can take, which means we have another twenty five percent of margin on top of that before we even get into our one point four factor of safety. So that's the, the, the wind limits. We also measured the load at the vehicle support posts and at the vehicle stabilizer. So at the bottom of the vehicle and then uh, about two thirds of the way up the vehicle as well. Um, those design limits are captured in our Space Launch System requirements documents. None of those were exceeded. Um, so from our perspective, um, we stayed within our certification at the, wind, uh, at the winds that we saw during the hurricane. Um, I think it's safe to say for all of us, we, we obviously would not have wanted to stay out there. The, the best place for the vehicle and those kind of things is the VAB. We could not make it back to the VAB and be safe. So um, we stayed where we were, and our predictions and our certification limits um, protected us uh, from, the, from the storm. So our, uh, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a complex set of calculations that our, our team does, you know, using I think the comment made was, that, you know, that's the beauty of eigenvectors, um, which uh, for an engineer to hear, that's a, a heartwarming thing. You know, they, they, they do a great job at, at giving us a hand in, in understanding how we transform through the uh, structural matrices that go into these calculations. So, uh, so our near-term plans, uh, we're going to start to power up the vehicle today. Um, Power-up's not affected by that uh, electrical uh, connector that I mentioned earlier. Move into our program-specific engineering test or PSETs start on Sunday. Uh, we have our L minus two still on track for Sunday at uh, 1600, and uh, then from there we'll we'll press to the launch count. 
So right now we're, as I said at the top, there's nothing preventing us from getting us getting to the 16th.